In this video, I want to talk briefly about the concept of energy balance. And energy balance, I believe, is what most people curious about fitness and blood flow, what they're really the core of fitness, the core of health can be simplified to energy balance. So let me give you an example. So in Taiwan, and I believe in many other places in the world, the three top health issues are obesity, sarcopenia, and chronic fatigue. And I believe that not just in Taiwan, but most people who are trying to improve their health are facing one of these three issues. When we look at these three issues, they actually all boil down to energy balance. And so when we talk about obesity, it's really just a net positive energy balance in the sense that if we look at the input and the output of energy, the input is higher than the output, which creates um, improper energy balance. So first I want to say that I'm a certified fitness professional. I'm not a medical doctor. However, the way that I see chronic fatigue is actually insufficient energy intake, or it could be improper, inefficient energy intake, and definitely a lack of energy output. So again, this can be broken down into being resolved through energy balance. I was first introduced to the concept of energy balance in sophomore year of engineering school in a class called fluid mechanics. And we would basically be analyzing different control systems. And what we would physically do is draw a circle around the control system that we're analyzing. And then the next step would be to look at the inputs into the control system and the outputs into the control system. And from there, we would then go into steam tables to look at more different variables and relationships to solve the problem at hand. However, this is probably, you know, an easier way to look at this is a lot of people, they're asking the wrong questions. They're too zoomed in. So the, a lot of the questions you'll, you'll hear are, you know, how many times per week should I train? How many exercises? Which exercises? Now, how many reps? How many sets? Um, these types of questions. How many calories? How much protein? But really, what they're truly asking is, let's zoom out and take a look at the energy balance. Because if we look at just the training side of things, the energy output, then these are questions like how many sets, how many reps, how many times per week. But these questions are completely neglecting the energy input side of things. Let's go extreme and say, if you're not eating any food, then of course you should be eating, you should be doing a lot less training because you're not able to recover from whatever training you, you enjoy. Let's talk about stimulus, fatigue, and recovery. So when we look at blood flow, when we look at training, we're typically focused, focusing on the stimulus, the exercise itself, which exercise, which muscles we're training and in which man manner, whether through the programming and our strategy in achieving whatever our goal is. This is strictly looking at stimulus. However, when we, when we talk about energy balance, we need to think about not just one perspective, but at least two perspectives and ideally infinite perspectives. But in this case, when we talk about stimulus and reco recovery and the balance between the two of them, how much stimulus we want to use on our body needs to be then balanced with recovery, whether that's through nutrition, whether that's through sleeping, whether that's through mobility work. There's all types of forms of recovery, but energy balance in the, turn in the sense of stimulus to recovery, it's extremely important. Another example of energy balance is financial energy balance. We have to look at both the cash inflow and the cash outflow. So it's not necessarily about how much money is coming in, but how much money is going out. When we look at someone who is in debt, they're actually not much different than someone who is obese in the sense that they both have enjoyed something before they've earned it. So what I mean by that is someone who has, say, they bought a car, but they don't have the savings to buy this car. Therefore, they must make payments and over time, over years, they eventually paid out the car and then it becomes their car. And same thing with obesity in the sense that someone who is obese, they've simply enjoyed some food before they've done the required energy output to balance that net energy. There are a lot of other examples of energy balance. We can also look um, in a more zoomed in fashion. So if we look at just 
energy output training, which seems most people are more interested in, you know, how to effectively train, the most effective, optimal way to train. And this can be broken down into energy balance as well, just the energy output. And one example of that is balancing three variables, intensity, volume, and frequency. So in this video, I really just wanted to challenge everyone's perspective on health, fitness, blood flow, and to keep asking questions. The questions are great, whether even if they're too zoomed in, they're too zoomed out, all questions are great questions. However, I believe that if you take a step back, most of your questions are really about energy balance.